Hey everybody, welcome to the Eco9 stream. This is our second video in the series. So today I'm going to be talking about the uh, couple new features we got in the game. Uh, the election system that we're introducing for 9.0 and the new uh, Ecopedia that we've got. Uh, also showing off some of the cool new building stuff that people uh, that the team's been adding. You can kind of see the new uh, new block types here. I'll go over that some as well. And yeah, just diving a little deeper into Eco 9.0. Uh, we still haven't announced a date for that yet. We're currently focusing on performance. We want to make sure that's solid before we uh, announce a date. Uh, and just polishing up and fixing everything. But we got a ton that's going to be in this update, so I'm looking forward to showing it to you. I'm John K, by the way. Uh, designer of Eco. So let's take a look at some of this stuff. So if you saw our last video, I uh, demoed the constitutions and how those work in the game. So if you haven't seen that one, you can check that in our, uh, our history. Uh, but basically what I want to show you today is how elections work, how you can become elected in Eco, and uh, run for election and create these different government positions that actually run the government. So let's go to this constitution. So the first thing you have to do, actually let me show you here. So there's a number of different objects. You control the government by creating these different objects in the world. This here is a board of elections. So this lets you define all the di uh, different election processes in the game. So to start with, you have no privileges to make here. You have to create, uh, you have to ratify a constitution. So since we haven't done that yet, let's go do that now. Uh, and the basic idea behind constitutions, I went into detail last time, but they have a, they define who can do what in the government. So if we look at this default one that gets generated here, we can see Article 4, election process changes by election. And this means that if you want to change an election process, you got to have an election in order to do it. Uh, similarly, elected title changes by election. So if you want to uh, run for office, you got to, or if you want to create a new title, you got to create an election for that as well. Uh, and you can change that so that it's, it's controlled in different ways. But let's go ahead and create this basic constitution here. So I've submitted it. It's on to election, you can see it in our uh, legislation here, you know, ratified constitution. Uh, let's go ahead and just bypass uh, that particular election. And there we go. So the constitution has been ratified. Everybody on the server gets a notice. And you can see uh, that it shows up here in the government page. Uh, and now there's a whole bunch of new abilities that you have. So in your civic duties, you can see what abilities you have. And one of those abilities is election processes. So by Article 6, you may change election processes at any time. You may vote in elections, change election process at any time. So let's take a look at that. Also have the chat here on a separate screen so I can uh, reply to stuff here. Somebody asked to change the volume. I'll just pop out and do that for you. Hopefully that's a little better. So let's head back over to this election process. I'm not related to Chuck Norris, as a matter of fact. But thank you, he's, he's a badass, so I'll take that. <laughs> uh, so let's draft an election process. So what is an election process, you ask? Well, I'm glad you asked. This basically defines how an election works in the game. Uh, so if you've played Eco before, you know that there's you could, there are elections in the current version of Eco, but there's just one type of election, and it's always the same regardless of how uh, what it's being applied to. But now you can have different elections for different uh, types of things. So say we want to have an election where no, not everyone can vote, but only admins, perhaps. And in this election, we want to allow John K to veto stuff because I love uh, vetoing is actually pretty fun. And we'll make it anonymous voting. I mean, you've got all these different properties that you can configure, you know, how long are election terms. So if you really want to dive into the details of it, uh, 
you can now. And it, it gives you some default values, so you don't necessarily have to worry about this. Uh, but this lets you make uh, specific elections. And the reason you would want to do this is maybe you have an election where only uh, members of the government can vote. So you have a representative uh, s government system where you elect representatives and then those representatives vote on laws. Or you can have specific uh, titles that have veto powers. Or maybe you want an election that only lasts one hour if it's an emergency of some kind. Uh, so you can do all that. You can really configure the fine details of here. So let's go ahead and propose this election process and you'll see that the election process now itself is in election uh, and you'll see that here in the government tab uh, here's this current election add election process to so let's take a look at that so this is going to open up in my browser which i will show you here you guys can see that right so Something unique in Eco, uh, people who play the game are familiar with, we, uh, we make use of the browser as a, a second way to connect to the game. So the browser actually connects into the server. And the reason we did that is we want to have these really rich discussions where you're contributing uh, and debating things with your society that you're on. This is something you can do, you know, from your phone even, or if you're on the bus. So it's kind of a different layer. It's more the discussion layer. And I wanted to take that out, put it into a browser where uh, you know you're kind of used to having these like forum-like discussions. So here's you know the election, add election process two, best election process ever. I'm going to add a comment, and you can add data to these things. So you could say, you know, it's not really relevant for election processes, but maybe we want to look at the switchgrass population, and that somehow affects whatever election we're having here. So you can form this here and and submit that to the discussion. So every every election can have this discussion submitted to it. So we would go ahead and vote yes. And there we see the voting charts are up, 100% yes so far. Uh, but there's still eight hours in the election. So we'll just go ahead and speed that up with a nice cheat command here and there we go election process has been uh, completed the election passed and now this election process is in the game uh, so let's go make a new position title so this is where uh, you can create new powers for uh, elected titles in the game so previously you only had the world leader position but now you have a number of different, uh, you can create as many positions as you want. So let's find where we put the government office. I think it's over here. Anna built this really cool looking setup for us. Oh, here's a mint. This is the treasury room. Oh, this is the treasury here. You can see lots of new objects we're going to be getting in. Here we go, here's the government office. So this is government office, and here's where you define elected positions. So let's make an elected position that uh, is elected via this new election process we created, election process two. Uh, so now whenever an election for this title comes up, it's gonna use this process that we defined earlier. Uh, so you might want to use this if you want to have only a subset of people elect the president or whatever. Let's call this El Presidente. Uh, and then you can set specific requirements of players, like maybe... And this is where you can actually use the same interface that's in laws. It's something I'm going to demo later. You could say this, you know, this position, there's going to be some skill requirements on it. Uh, we're going to have really... You know, we want them to be really talented players only who are getting elected, so they need to they need to be expert butchers. They need to have a butchery skill uh, required level of four. So only the top butchers can run for president. So you can kind of get an idea of how you can configure this to be really specific needs. You know, maybe you'd want a player who's played for a while or who hasn't had any kind of black marks on their record. Uh, but there's a lot of flexibility in defining like what that happens with that. Uh, and you can see all the other properties you have here, term limits, uh, total terms allowed, consecutive terms allowed, lots of different ways you can configure this. Who is a successor? 
who can remove from office. This is fun. Let's let's make me able to remove from office. Uh, and you'll notice here, and if you see the title that I'm creating is listed here. So even as things are a draft or they're proposed, you can s you can specify them. Uh, and if they get passed, then it will uh, become active. So you you don't have to wait for something to be a enacted into law before you can specify it in other things, which uh, we didn't we don't have in current version of Eco, and is actually really really helpful for creating these you know things that reference each other. So let's say I can veto stuff. Uh, I'm going to have government banking privileges. I can use treasury count. I can set treasury taxes. I can set global markers. So all these cool powers. Uh, but in addition to that, you can uh, you know you can set special privileges. Like maybe on some property, you say only the president can access the property for the uh, constitution, for example. Uh, so go ahead and propose that. And you see that now this is in election. The creation of this position is itself an election. Uh, so basically every civic action in the game can happen via an election now. And you can uh, you know, decide which ones need elections and which ones don't, which ones can be passed just by an executive, etc. cetera. Uh, but just to give you an example of what you can do with this, say let's go over to the Constitution and say Okay, this this object, this room, we want to have. Uh, let me clean this real quick. We are going to give special access to El Presidente. You see, this is in the list now, even though it's proposed. So it won't take effect actually until it passes. But you can start setting this stuff up while it's an election which uh, was an important feature we wanted to make sure we had. So let's go back to this. Take a look. I'll show you one other thing we have. You can have required of office holders, so if this ever stops being true, then they, uh, they will be booted out of office. So we could say they have to be active. So if they ever become an inactive player, they'll get booted right out of office. Uh, and oh, down here is wages. This is a new feature we added too, and this allows you to set uh, money that will be paid out of specific accounts into the bank account of whoever holds this office. So these positions can be really interesting things for players to run for. It gives them a set of powers. It gives them a set of, you know, potentially wages, and uh, you'll have a set of these that just kind of manage your server. So. I'm really hoping to see that this will become a way for, for players to really get involved in the government. Uh, in the existing servers, there's just the one position, the world leader position. But in Eco9, there's the potential to create dozens of positions. You know, and, and you can hold these kind of minor positions, like maybe you have a minister of transportation who decides on all the roads, and he collects taxes for roads and spends them. Uh, so you can have this much more finer grained uh, controls and I'm really excited to see what what players do with that So let's go ahead and win this selection just force that to finish so uh, El Presidente uh Oh, that one's invalid because I had I didn't set the wages. Let's revise that I'm going to remove these wages There we go and finish it. So that's another feature we have where you can revise these things. And you click revise, and then you have a copy is created. Uh, so if I wanted to revise how this position works, maybe I decide, oh, we need term limits that aren't so long. I'm going to drop this down to one day instead. Then I would propose it, and that change would actually go to election. So not only can you elect specific things, you can elect changes in there. So you can see, let's just look at the tooltip here. The Modify El Presidente version 2 election. And this proposal, change elected title El Presidente v2 to v3. You can kind of look at what the differences are in there. And it'll show you specific differences on the election page. Uh, so, yeah, so lots of opportunities to update and, and keep your government relevant as you go. So go ahead and finish that. And now the 
El Presidente title is in effect. I'm going to go back over here and let's start an election for El Presidente. So I've just created this new title, but there's nobody in that office yet. Uh, but because the Constitution says anybody can start an election for this, we will start an election for El Presidente version 3. That's because we edited it twice. It gave it a, an updated name. There we go. Election was started. Everybody gets a notice. And now everybody can enter that election if they want. So let's go ahead and enter it. I am going to run for election. I would be the best Presidente. So you give a speech, reason why you want to take this office. And, oh, look at that. I can't get this office because I don't have butchery level 4. Uh, let me go and let's just change the rules, shall we? Be a proper politician. And if the rules aren't working for us, you know, we can just go ahead and change them. Go back here to the government office. Revise the El Presidente rules. No more skill requirements. So that change is proposed. I will force finish the election. And now El Presidente version 4 does not require butchery. We don't need butchers running our country anyway. Let's go back over here and turn on fly mode so I can scoot around here quicker for the demo. Go back to our ballot box. Oh, so I didn't introduce this object, but the idea of this object is it just lets you uh, take different actions with elections. Uh, you can see the different things you can do. You, know, you can veto, you can vote, you can start an election. So let's restart that election for the El Presidente. And then we'll go ahead and enter it. And there we go, we entered the election. So now everybody will see that I've entered the election and uh, players will have the ability to go vote on it. Here in the legislation list, we can see what uh, what things are up for election currently. And there's just the one right now, the El Presidente V4 election, which we'll go ahead and take a look at. So here we go. Here's all the powers that the El Presidente gets. There's just one candidate right now. And uh, we use ranked choice voting. Uh, so people who aren't familiar with that, rather than just picking a single candidate, which is uh, common in a lot of countries, instead you rank the candidates. And this is a more effective way if there's more than two candidates. You can, you know, you can pick your favorite candidate without throwing your vote away because uh, if your favorite candidate doesn't win, your vote goes to your second preference. So you're always able to... Uh, from a set of a lot of different candidates, you don't have to pick the one that you think is going to win. Now, this is something that I think a lot of governments could really benefit from, and there are a lot, especially in Europe, that do use this system. Uh, so it's, it's kind of cool to have that in ECO. Uh, and as usual, you have the discussion here where you can discuss the election. So let's go back into here. We'll finish the election. And look at that. I've been elected El Presidente. Uh, so in the tooltip here, you can see all the details about it. What does uh, what does that do for me? Uh, the the history is stored here, so you can see who who are all the people who've run for this election. You can even see the old election results for the election that got them there. Uh, one of the favorite things about Eco is that it builds this this rich history of your world where you can see you know, how everything went. You can look at the graphs. You know, when a game is done, you can kind of explore this, this path that a whole society took. And I have all these powers now. Uh, so I'll start going into these powers more in later videos where you can uh, manipulate taxes and laws and things like that. Uh, but yeah, that gives me access to that particular title. And now, because we've given access on this constitution, you have special authorization. Uh, you can have special privileges there. So depending on how you configure it, you can give special privileges to uh, all kinds of people and really customize your government. 
So let's take a look at the other thing I wanted to demo today, which is the Ecopedia section. So let's pull that up here. Uh, so this is basically an in-game wiki with a lot more than just details about individual items. It has kind of the high-level concepts of the game. And the idea with this is that we really wanted to uh, help bridge that learning curve. You know, Ego is a game that's full of ideas, and they can get decently complex. So we wanted to lay them out in these specific categories that players can understand it. So you have this getting started section, which you know shows you, talks about the path you're going to take, how you're approaching the game. And then it kind of introduces the core concepts of the game, you know, the meteor, food and shelter, using tools, choosing a profession, economics, civics, life in an ecosystem. Uh, so it gives you a rough overview. And then you can dive into the details of it. So we have different sections for the three main pillars of the game. Uh, we have the economy, which has explains how all these different parts of it work. And you have the ecosystem see some of these great banners that uh, Rob and Keegan put together. And you get all this data about how the ecosystem works. So really rich, just, you know, we, we aim to make these really easy and, and fun to use. You kind of see how these things scroll around and you click them. Uh, and it should be a great tour, a great intro for the game. Uh, we have the government section, talks about how all these pieces of the government work. This is the kind of thing that spurred the creation of the Ecopedia is that there's a lot of complexity in here now and we want to give players a way to navigate that really easily so they can build some cool stuff. Like here on the laws panel it tells you how laws work and then it shows you all the different things you can make laws about and we have a ton of them now and this will just keep growing as we keep building the game too. How taxes work, how titles work, uh, housing system uh, and then down here let's turn off so it will sheet see all items, not just discovered items. Uh, in the components, you can see the specific help on these individual uh, interfaces. So if you've ever opened up an object and you're like, what the heck is this? Now you have an easy way to use it. So for example, we also link this from the objects themselves. So here on the civics, we can hit the question mark. It takes you right to the civics page. Uh, so you have this nice, you know, help pop up. Wherever you see this button, it's going to just get you details on how that stuff works. How does the authorization, authorization tab work? And here's the details right here. Uh, it's got hot links. So you can link between these things. Then we have the reference section, which is just a reference of every item in the game. So you can see, you know, all the building materials. All these ones down here. Uh, you see, if you, if you show only discovered, there's just a few discovered because this is a fresh world. Uh, or you can look at all the ones that are available, and there's, there's quite a lot of them. Crafted objects, so just an easy way to browse all this stuff. Enhancements, which is a new system we're adding. This is going to let you up the uh, production capabilities and efficiency of the objects you use. It's kind of an adjustment to how the skill systems work, so we'll do another blog on that. Got all our food systems, and I really just love all the icons that uh, Malenko and Rob and our team made for these. It just really looks really nice in these, these layouts here. You can look at each profession, each type of workstation. Uh, and then here we have the world index. So this one's a little special that it's not pre-canned information. This is built specifically from the server. So this is just the list of all the bank accounts in the game here, and you can see my bank account's on there. Uh, Easton, that's Anna, she's, she's got a bank account on here. And you can see a list of all the citizens in the game. So this is a way to look at uh, all the different items that are in the game and just get an easy to browse uh, system for them. Work parties, titles, work orders. Uh, and then lastly, we have eco-development. So I won't talk about this too much, I'm going to show this later, but we're building this really cool exploration of uh, what eco is and where we plan to take it 
and a way to kind of per, you know, participate in development, give us lots of feedback. Really excited about this. Talk about this in another blog. Uh, and you can also mod this Ecopedia. So that's one of the, the nice things about it is if you have a custom server that's doing interesting different stuff, you can, uh, you can have extra pages in here you know, that has images in it, that has links in it. So everything you see here, these are just XML files. All you have to do is drop an XML in your server and you get a new page. So we've already got a lot of servers that are doing all kinds of interesting mods and custom things. and this Ecopedia should, should make a great way to organize all that information. All right, so those are the two big features I wanted to show you guys. So uh, I've got time to take some questions. Be checking out the chat. Let's see what we got. I hope that Ecopedia doesn't contain that much information and explanations, but advising what biomes would be helpful. Yeah, it's mainly for explaining the concepts so you kind of understand what you're doing in the game. You still have to design your government. You still have to design your economy. So it's, it's definitely not designed to replace that by any means. Uh, but it should be pretty powerful for allowing you to understand what stuff's, how stuff works, how it's all connected, and just get quick links to it. With the new government set up, will there be a process? Oh, sorry, that chat disappeared. Will there be a process to elect a new leader? I think somebody asked. Uh, yes, that's defined by the Constitution. So you can set who can elect it, who can veto it, etc. Uh, a lot of the features I was shown earlier. Somebody asked the last time where the bathroom was, so Anna went ahead and made a huge <laughs> fancy bathroom for this demo, which I thought was pretty awesome. So yeah, you do have bathrooms in the game. You don't actually use a toilet, but it gives you uh, housing points. So you can see my housing value here because I have these. Uh, let's see if I claim this. I now have a bathroom. Yep. So this is a system we've had for quite a while, but. Uh, it's nice to point out you have different room types and the bathroom type is going to give me extra skill points. So having different types of rooms will, will boost you up. It's reasons to build fancy houses. Oh, nice bathtub here. Oh, nominations. Somebody suggested nominations for elections. That is a good idea. You know, you could probably rig that together with yeah, it's like a separate position you have to be appointed to before you can run as a candidate. Yeah, I bet that's possible. Will we need to regenerate a new world for 9.0 to take effect? Elsa Bell asks. Uh, you won't need to, but it's going to be a good idea because there's tons of new minerals and a new mining process. Uh, so if you're using an old world, we are going to support migrating it. Uh, We'll probably have a way, we'll add a way to spawn those minerals in the game and new ingredients that you're going to need. Uh, or you might have to do it manually. Uh, but yeah, best bet is to start from a new one if you want. But we do want to support these, these awesome worlds people have built. So there'll be ways to do that. For an ecological game, why not put a cow? It is the animal that pollutes the most. That is a good point from Cheruval59. Yeah, animals, uh, domesticated animals are one of the biggest sources of pollution. That is definitely something we want to add. And I think that's going to be one of our longer term features because to do it right would take quite a lot of work. Uh, someone's asking about performance increase with 9.0, Moffle. Uh, yes, we're focusing on performance for 9.0. We did some updates this week, so there's already been a big increase in the frame rate, and we're continuing to uh develop on that so yeah definitely expect much better performance it's uh, one of the feedbacks we've got and we're we're focusing on that i see the toilet doesn't need a pipe connection anymore that's good but if you want water requirements perhaps you should add a water box that requires a water pipe connection and let the toilet bathtub be in a radius of effect it says satsuki shizukiya that's funny suggest that because that's exactly what keegan wants to do uh so 
He's asking about the, the toilet doesn't have pipes connected to it, but uh, we still want to have sewage in the game, so we'll make a system for... Uh, you can have like a little water box in the room that, that supplies all of these elements with water. Is it possible to add helmets with light, like candle helmets? We don't have that yet. We have torches. Uh, that's a good idea, so that you can have that hands-free. Um, new minerals, somebody asked about. Yes, tons of new minerals and deposits and drills. Uh, we'll go over that in a new another blog, uh, but it'll be a really uh, a lot of new details to mining. So I think you guys will like that. Uh, Baby Ursa asks, any thought on introducing food-based pollution and a dynamic of vegan plane that improves on the planet? Yeah, that is a good point. As once we introduce domesticated animals and make that a major source of pollution, then you could have your food choices are really impacting the environment. I like that idea a lot and something I'd like to do eventually. Water. Can we have flowing water, ability to make dams, ponds, and lakes? Asks Wolsey89. To some degree, water is a tricky one because if you just allow free flow of water, you can flood other people's cities and kind of troll with it. So figuring out the right way to do that is tricky. We do have a system now where you can build canals and aqueducts and pumps and that kind of thing. So we'll probably keep expanding that. Uh, dams is a really cool idea. I would like to do something like that. Uh, we do have rivers in the game, so I think there's definitely a possibility for that. Uh, but that will be some work still. You can see you got little waterfalls here. So lots of opportunities where we could be putting dams. Prey Gaming says maybe a house building could have its own input output and items contained within that don't have such connections themselves would require the building connection to operate. I think that or if you're talking about pipes and water still, yeah, that's the kind of the way we do that is we would have like a water box, uh, like someone was suggesting that you plug into and then it supplies the room basically fossils that we can put on display. I love that idea. That's such a cool thing that you can discover that stuff in the game. Uh, so yeah, somebody will add like dinosaur fossils or something like that. It's going to be a fun thing to find while you're mining. Is it possible to have a transport animal to start, like a donkey or a horse with a wheelbarrow? That is an, a good idea I'd like to add, especially with domesticated animals. Uh, and it is something I want to do eventually probably do something like trains before we did transport animals. Uh, it's always been a favor to people. But before all that, we're going to do boats. Boats is going to be one of the first things after 9.0 that we work on. We actually already got a lot of art for those. Physics to stop flying buildings like this floating outhouse. Yeah, that's that's a tricky one to do. I mean, we you can make these kind of floating structures like this, but yeah, some kind of engineering system where you have to consider the you know, the structural integrity of these items would be cool. Oh look, there's a butterfly in the bathroom. So it's, it's not super high on the list because it doesn't contribute directly to kind of the eco-government economy simulation, but I would like to add that eventually, especially to have like huge bridges and structural engineering would be really cool. Uh, Prey Gaming asks, Oh wait, let's go to this one. Mawful. Could you say something about Eco's future and where it stands now? Uh, I've got the idea that Eco is becoming more and more popular. Is this true? And with this, is the dev team expanding, for instance? Yeah, Eco has been uh, growing in sales. We've been really happy to see that it just, uh, you know, that it keeps going up. We don't have any kind of DLC or in-app purchases in the game, but the number of players is continuing to grow, and that's been awesome for getting us more and more support. So, I'm thinking that 9.0 is going to be a great uh, step for Eco, hopefully bring a lot more people into the game, and yeah, keep growing it. We're, we're pretty dedicated to the future of this game, so I basically see it as our forever game. It's the kind of game that you can add infinite stuff to, and as long as it's 
continuing to grow and you know support itself uh, we can keep adding to it and adding expansions and adding uh, and growing the team so uh, I think you'll see a lot you'll get a lot of those details once we debut the eco tree which is this thing this is showing kind of the present and future of eco you know what we have now what we're going to be building each one of these nodes is a, a feature group and there's just so much that can fit into this game that we could basically develop it forever but we have priorities of you know what is the vision of this where do we want to take it and uh yeah, this will this will really communicate this is a very live uh object that's in, in our web page this is going to be our new home page i understand what you're saying trolling with water however if the world is getting polluted storms get worse flood defenses and such would bring more to do as masons yeah, it would definitely be cool. I, I especially like would have, would like to have dams because dams are such a great connection to the ecosystem. So I think that is worth doing. Uh, on note of flooding, any plans for random weather that could impact the land? Example, if it starts raining a lot, it could cause flooding and the players would need to act to protect the lands or lose crops. Or is there a lack of rain or some alternative method of watering crops causes a drought? diminish lost crops from that as well weather is definitely something we want to add it's kind of tricky to fit weather into the simulation because you know the time scale of eco is tricky like if you're if you're considering like when storms are happening but at the same time trees grow to maturity in like a few days how much time is passing how long are these storms i think there's something we could do even if it's just aesthetic or kind of representative of the surrounding climate we could get some some really cool weather effects. I would also really like to see seasons in the game at some point too. Let's see. Answer a couple more questions and then take off. It's actually pretty late here. I'm working remotely from uh, Southeast Asia, so I got this co-working place to myself, which gives me some pretty speedy internet, which is nice. Oh, look at this little cute foxes and bunnies trying to kill each other. <laughs> Stuck on this little island. It's awesome. Oh, one other thing I can show you. Some of the new wood structures we've got. Here's some of the different tiered materials. Uh, so we're really expanding lumber and wood and how uh, and bringing it into the late game. So these are all different composite types of lumber which you can make some really unique and interesting houses with. Uh, also just a nice little feature here. You can mouse over these and see what the block is now or you can look at a species and see what the species is uh, and then get all those tooltip tooltip information about it and jump to the Ecopedia if you want to and go look at it there. Voidman asks, will we be able to turn a desert into a rainforest or vice versa? Yes, the game has dynamic irrigation, has dynamic temperatures, so there is a possibility for those kind of wide-scale terraforming projects like that. That's definitely something I want to see a lot of because it is create such a big impact on the on the environment when you do that kind of thing. <laughs> Are there plans to show animals actually hunting other critters like wolves and foxes going after rabbits? We do have that and they will actually will kill each other sometimes. I think that's still just in the works right now. Uh, but uh, our programmer Stas has been working hard on that and it's looking really nice. <coughs> All right, I think we'll call that a stream for now. Uh, glad to give you guys a look at some of the new stuff we're doing. And yeah, let me know, uh, catch me on Discord or shoot me an email. Uh, any questions you have or uh, feedback. Uh, it's always great to hear player feedback. And yeah, really awesome having the community support on this. And looking forward to get this out to everybody. All right, thanks a lot, guys. Have a good night, afternoon, morning. See ya.